Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. What does God want me to do? How does God want me to live in the position I've been placed? Anyways, this is the most common question which Christians ask. For being a Christian, we know we're meant to live life differently. We know that faith should impact our life. We still often wonder, how? How does faith intersect our vocation of student, parent, employee, boss, or any vocation which we hold? Many Christians have wondered this throughout time. In fact, we know Luther himself was asked this question, or maybe even asked it himself many times. This is where we get what's called the Table of Duties. The Table of Duties is a compilation of Bible verses that speaks toward each station in life. It's a list that answers that very question what God wants you to do in that particular vocation. For instance, as citizens, submit to governing authorities and give them what is due, for they are an instrument of God. Husbands and wives, love and honor one another just as Christ has loved you. Parents, raise your children in the faith and care for them as a dear child of God. And children, love and honor your parents, for they are a blessing from God to you, that you may live well on this earth. To workers and bosses alike, treat one another with kindness, for you both are children of God. And to everyone, Love your neighbor as yourself, for this is the sum of the law. Indeed, this is what God has given you to do. So, as a Christian, we follow what God tells us, what God gives us to do. But why? Why do we do these things? Well, of course, one answer is, you do them because God said so. But today, in our gospel lesson, Jesus shows Peter and the other disciples that this isn't the only motivation. Or better yet, this shouldn't be their motivation at all. For you see, the motivation of the Christian life isn't one of necessity. This is why Christ asked Peter, now ask you, do you love me? Disciples have already seen Jesus twice since he was raised from the dead. But now it's been a while for them since they've seen him. Do they still love Jesus? Well, of course they do. They no longer knew what they're supposed to do anymore. They still have their own responsibilities, as many of them have their own families. They needed to eat in order to live. They needed to work in order to eat. Do they want to work? <coughs> Probably not. But eventually the disciples knew they couldn't wait around any longer for Jesus to tell them their next task. For so, this is what John records for us in his gospel. Simon Peter said to the other disciples, I am going fishing. And they said back to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. You can only imagine after being with Jesus for three years, being back on the sea was probably the last thing they expected they'd be doing at this point. Indeed, they probably thought they'd be going throughout the world performing miracles right alongside Jesus. 
just as they had the last three years. Jesus wasn't there anymore to tell them what to do or how to do it. He'd show up on occasion and disappear again. Now that it had been a while, they went fishing. Not out of desire, but out of pure necessity. And you see, motivated by the necessity of the tax, they did only what was absolutely necessary. For the disciples toiled all night long, but they caught nothing. Not even a single fish. All that effort they exerted and absolutely no reward. Only imagine the disciples are sitting on that boat wondering, Jesus, what do you want me to do? What's next? Of course, maybe you too have had that mountaintop experience. Much like the disciples had when they saw Jesus raised from the dead that first Easter morn. But that feeling doesn't last for us. Do you still love Jesus? Well, of course we do. But we also still wonder, what's next? What do I do now? For eventually we know we need to return to life as usual. For in life, there's no shortage of responsibilities for us. And it's no secret that we don't like doing most of them. You get up and go to work every day, even though you'd rather be home because you need money to survive. You go to school, even though you're dying for summer vacation, because you're required to be there. You clean the dishes, make the bed, cook dinner, do laundry, and many other things. Because it's necessary that they get done. You see, for many things, we are motivated by nothing other than necessity. You're motivated by the law. But this is the reality of most things that we do. It says, do them or face the consequences. So you convince yourself to muster up just enough effort to get another task done, even when you don't want to. After all, it's just another repetitive task you can cross off the list for another day. When this is your motivation, it's draining. It always catches up to us. So it leaves us sitting there wondering, God, what do you really want me to do? But when did we become so good at disconnecting faith from the rest of life? For you see, being a Christian impacts everything, not just what we do, but even our very motivation for doing it. You see, your faith is your motivation for everything you do. As Christians, we're not motivated by the law, but rather by the gospel. You're motivated not by necessity, by Jesus' death and resurrection for you. For in Jesus, God has shown you just how much he loves you. He would send even his one and only son to die on the cross for you. So he calls you to live that reality. For you see, because of what God has done for you, he now enables you to love him. And since you love God, you can now love those around you. So you go to work, not because you have to, because now you can share the very love of God with your co-workers. You go to school, not because it's required, but because it's where God has placed you. You can now show fellow students the very love of God. You clean the house, mow the yard, do laundry, honor your boss, love your neighbor, not because it's what we're told to do, 
because it's the very things by which we show forth the love God has for us and all people. We see in faith, we no longer see these things as mindless, repetitive tasks. Rather, we look at the ones for whom Christ died, to share with them Christ's love, even eternal life. In faith, we see the reward. We see the brother or sister in Christ who will share with us in life everlasting. For so Jesus asks you, do you love me? We can answer right along with Peter. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. For as we sit and wonder, what does God want you to do? This is what God wants us to do. Let the very love of God shine forth in everything you say and do. You see, as the disciples return to their craft, Jesus reveals himself to them to reorient them in this task. For the disciples were driven out of pure necessity and catch nothing. And as they're sitting there wondering what's next for them, Jesus comes and tells them, cast the net on the right side. And as they haul it in, it is teeming with fish. And you see, by this simple miracle, one of the disciples realizes it's none other than Jesus standing there on the shore. For so he turns and tells Peter, it is the Lord. And Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord. He put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. See what a difference. Peter, motivated by the very presence of Jesus, jumps out of the boat and races to Jesus as quickly as possible. And as all the disciples come to shore, Jesus is teaching them again. For Jesus has prepared a meal for these weary disciples. To Jesus, this isn't some meaningless task. Instead, it is a show of his love for them. So Jesus goes forth and teaches Peter. His motivation isn't the law. It's not one of necessity. And that the motivation for the, is the gospel. Peter's motivation is his very love for the Lord. Because of just how much Jesus has done for him. For so Jesus asked Peter three times, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Which Peter replies, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus says, feed my sheep. Jesus shows how Peter's love for him will be the basis of everything he does. How he will feed the flock of God with Jesus' own words. For nothing to Peter will be this meaningless task. Rather, because of Peter's faith, his love for Jesus he will care for all those God places around him. So just as Jesus tells Peter, he also tells you, follow me. And motivated by that very love of Jesus, let us show forth God's love to all. So look at your station in life and wonder, what does God want us to do? See first God's own love for you, for this is foundational to all of life. This is what the table of duties also shows. What are we to do? Fulfill your station as a parent, a child, student, employee, and let everything we say and do show forth God's love to all people all those he's placed around you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Now may the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.